Hello and welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about DC's Suicide Squad or The Suicide Squad. This is a sequel even though there's some weirdness in the production behind the scenes stuff. It's directed by James Gunn of the Guardians of the Galaxy fame. It stars Margot Robbie, Idris Elba, John Cena, Joel Kinnaman, Sylvester Stallone, who does a voice of King Shark, I believe. Viola Davis, David Deshmalchen, blah, 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 Michael Roca. So, this is continuing from the Suicide Squad movie that kind of got panned. Now, I'll say this is a better put-together movie. Watching the first Suicide Squad movie, it has some good elements in it. Uh, as a fan of comic books, DC, Marvel, Image Independent, you know, Valiant, whatever, it doesn't matter. I don't have gripes like that. I was kind of excited to see it. I watched the first one. There were some elements in it you liked, but it felt like two directors came in. I don't know what the behind the scenes was on that. And it just fell flat. It just didn't feel like it hit its mark. And... I wouldn't say it's one of those movies that I hate, uh, you know, but coming into this one, The Suicide Squad, they get James Gunn, and for me, this is a mixed bag. It's better than the first one. I could say that clearly, but there are things in here I don't like, and there are things in here I love. The, uh, he, he, there are some dumb things that are on purpose dumb that just don't resonate with me. The corniness of it here and there kind of bothers me. I don't this like I enjoyed the film to an extent. There was some I love the polka dot man, you, you know, but bringing certain people back for certain reasons, and I won't give too many plot reveals or spoilers. But if I'm going to, I'll I'll say so beforehand. In general, I'll just open this up by saying it's better than the first one, but it's a mixed bag for me. And getting to the characters is not um, the issue as if I, I, I have a feeling, maybe it's bias or whatever, but I get this feeling that James Gunn was saying fuck you to the movie industry. I, I don't know why. Maybe it's, I read an article or something, and I usually avoid it. I don't even remember what got... Um, James got into trouble in the first place. I think it had to do with old tweets or something or some message board. I'm not sure. But I don't remember reading articles or nothing. But as I'm watching the movie, I'm going, he's, he's doing things on purpose just to, just to, it just feels, it felt weird. I, I don't know. Again, this is just me, uh, looking at, um, you know, watching it and then kind of getting a little bit of an idea of what his problem was. And he was kind of, he was almost blacklisted, that type thing. I think he was almost canceled, whatever the fucking cancel culture is or consequence culture. So is it, um, some, his style in this movie, does his director, um, instincts just go, look, I'm just going to fuck everything. And like I said, if I gave super spoilers and plot reveals, there's a lot of things in here that just kind of annoyed me and I didn't see enough of the wow me love attached to a character. So I found myself, you know, in a weird place going through the movie. And one of the things I, um, I, I like, I get John Cena's popularity, but he's, he, to me, he's not the rock. I'm not sure if there's, you know what, there's one movie. I think I actually enjoyed him in. Um, I think it was a movie about uh, I don't know. He had like he had to do like twelve things or something like that. <laughs> I don't I don't remember, but uh, he had uh, it was like one of those villain calls you up on the phone and tells you how to do something anyway. When he, when he's given leeway to do things, I'm not a big fan of him, but. Characters like Polka Dot Man, King Shark, like, they grew on me. 
but this year just some visual effect type stuff and just the dumbness of the movie and i get that's where it's going but i don't know it just didn't feel right with me i'll quickly go through a summation if this is a spoiler be one but basically movie opens up with the uh, a suicide squad going on a mission and you see people you recognize from uh the first film and some new characters there's no direct well maybe there is here and there there's like a um a mention or uh you know something that really cements the first movie but you can tell it's a continuation but instead of being the suicide squad they're actually the distraction squad so they go in to just expose the enemy i guess and get overwhelmed and then another team another suicide squad is going in from a different angle and that's where the movie's going to center on but you got some characters that are just hands down ridiculous and on purpose which is a great thing where you can take obscure characters um give them a you know a, a, a good feeling on screen and just like an amazement of like what characters were made. So I'm going to reveal one of them now because it's stupid and ridiculous. But it's uh, the detachable kid. Now, I, I thought he was from the comic books, Arms Fall Off Boy. <laughs> and I'm not fucking around with you. These are like real characters. I am really stoned, so I don't know. You know, I am addiction master. Um, But... The detachable kid, TDK, he makes something about his, you know, initials or something, and they're talking, and he can detach his arms, and they can float around, and and it's the bad, it's the worst special effects. It's so dumb looking, but that's what they're going for, and I get it. There's an Olympic athlete who, his ability is like throwing spears, and it just gets out of hand, they get overwhelmed. And badasses are screaming and crying and running. Uh, the SNL guy gets like his face blown off. It's just mayhem, and you kind of don't know what's happening to a couple of the characters because hey, they're from the first movie and they're really popular. But like I said, it, it then focuses on the second team because the first Suicide Squad is really Distraction Squad. And then the movie progresses with this new team. And what can you say about Idris Elba? He's just good in fucking everything. And that's just like meme going around. But it's just true. I mean, it was a bad uh, Stephen King movie they did. Um, the Tower or something like that. What was it? Uh, you know, he's like a gunslinger type guy. The movie was fucking not that good. But you just like him in everything. Uh, like, when are they going to make him Bond type bullshit? But... He's just that good. I love Margot Robbie as um, Harlequin. And I, I just think John Cena just annoys me a lot of shit. So, Polka Dot Man, amazing. Really good uh, focus on the character. In, in, the, in the vein of, in the first movie, they did a really cool thing with one of the characters who was like a fire guy, a pyrotech, whatever the fuck he was. And he transformed at the end into some like fire being and took on one of the majors and he sacrificed himself um his storyline had a real deep meaning and had some really dark overtones and they do that same thing with like polka dot man so he's the focus there and they do enough to make the movie enjoyable in in in, a, in that sense i mean again this will be a mixed bag for me but it's going to hit an audience and wow them in a sense I, I, you could tell they went for it with the big creature at the end and as i've been saying in my own jumbled way you open the movie up with a fake distraction squad you focus on the other team and then they kind of mix it where you find out what was happening to the first team and how they survived um like i said there are things that are so annoyingly ridiculous that they just don't help me get immersed they pull me out and I've said this over the last couple of podcasts, um, last month or so, there has been something that I went through and it can be coloring my objectivity or my 
um, ability to not come into a movie or something, but out of, you know, a bias of some sort or something that's been on, weighing on me. That's just uh, trying to be honest about it. So I can see this being a real step up from the first movie for a lot of people. Oh, the movie with John Cena was 12 rounds. It's like when he's forced to play someone who's serious and real, I actually think he's actually pretty good. I did a movie like The Marine or something like that. But when he's trying to go overboard, I don't like it that much. He was in uh, Bumblebee, and his portrayal in that gave the gave it the element of it being in a cartoon, because that would be... He played like a cartoon character type uh, military guy. And it kind of went well with that. And in this, I, you would think that type of acting and would work perfect for his character in this movie. Who, I fucking forgot his fucking name. Uh, what is he, like the peacemaker, the peacekeeper? And it's um just not a peacemaker. It's not... For me, I don't know what it is. Again, it could be just me. Um, um, there were even rock movies that I don't like, and you know, maybe you choose the wrong thing or you put the wrong angle on it. However, I would not be surprised if I'm in the minority. So there's that. So you get to the middle of the movie, you're kind of piecing together what happened to some of the first people. You got the second people, and then there's this. Um, subplot that is revealed and goes into the third act of just uh, what do they call it? Fucking kaiju, like big fucking. You see it in the trail. It's no major spoilers, but a big starfish monster is rampaging around. Again, it, although it has a certain look to it, you can tell it's made to look campy, colorful. You know, to go with the theme of the movie. Um, and at the points where they try to make things serious, I think that's where when you do too much dumb stuff, it kind of doesn't work. And when you get ridiculous things, just to have, like, all right, there's a spoiler type thing. So the javelin guy on the first team dies, but as he's died, he gives his spear to Holly Quinn, who you think might die, but it's revealed later. Whatever. Okay, so spoiler alert. Um, so she has the spear throughout the movie. And at the end, when they're really trying to defeat this creature, it's, you know, Godzilla size and it's shooting out little starfish out of its armpits and stuff. And they go onto people's bodies and control them from the comic books, by the way, I think it might be the Justice League's first villain. I could be wrong on that. You know, I don't know if my nerd cred is good these days. So, you got a kaiju creature. Little creatures are spawning off it and hordes going on military on people and they become possessed and they become an extension of this creature. So, although it's like, you know, the ending would be more like every victory comes with two steps. Like every step forward is two steps back. And so, getting to this... Holly Quinn realizes what she has got the spear for. Now, you would think this could be a Rambo moment or an epic um, scene, and they try to make it. So she, spoiler alert, she leaps out of this building. And by the way, the ridiculousness of buildings falling and people fighting in them, this movie goes off the chains with that stuff in a fun way sometimes. So I'll give it that. So she leaps off this building and with the spear hits it in its central eye. It's a big starfish with a big eye. And the scene that follows just pure, I just fucking rolled my eyes and was so fucking annoyed that it kept going on as she's swimming in this eye fluid and it, it, they're trying to make how, um, you know, how much it hurt the creature. It just really just didn't resonate with me. And maybe, like I said, you know, you just, state of mind of things but it's those type of things and i don't even know if i described it right but you would think that the spirit in the eye would culminate in a um racking pain to the creature gives them an opening type thing and perhaps it does lead to that but 
they get this uh, scene where she's floating in this full fluid and it's supposed to be a visual art thing and the whole time I'm going, what the fuck is going on? And there's these elements in the movie that are meant to do that and I think it kind of bothered me in this movie. Uh, again, as a, in, a, in the bigger picture, I can see me, well, I'm going to watch this again. I'm, I love some of the irreverent stuff. I know I'm a hypocrite in that sense, but when done right with the right pacing in the movie, it works. But sometimes it just pulls me out for the, I don't know, right or wrong reason. Like I said, this is a mixed bag for me, but I'm not going to be surprised if there are a lot of people who just from beginning to end love the zany corniness of it, really um, went along for the ride. And I get it. Like I said, John Cena is probably really um, good in this movie for the character he's picking, right? He's got that wrestler persona. It works with the superhero genre. So I'm there. But again, overtones. There are just these things that pulled me out. It didn't make me really enjoy it that much. So all in all, it was a good experience. And I... um. I'm looking forward to watching it again. I will say that there is, there, it, it's got the moments in it, right? Uh, definitely better than the first one. I like the balls he has to go f forward with some of the stupidness, but it, at times, was a detriment, if that helps describe how I feel. I guess... In the end, would I look forward to another Suicide Squad movie? Now, yeah, I, 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 could. I could. I could see myself looking forward to another movie. Again, uh, in watching some of the movies and being delayed on some of these things, like, like I said, there were things going on. I didn't um, have enough time to really sit through and let things sink in. You know, my normal routine where I watch it, you know, watch something like twice and then write my little outline and get my opinions first before I start looking at other people's opinions on how the movies are doing. So I've been going in blind and just doing real quick things afterwards. I could see another Suicide Squad movie interesting me. Watching Black Widow going into that with no expectations kind of almost annoyed that I had to even watch it in a way. It was one of those things I described in that podcast. You could check it out. Is that I felt it came too late. It didn't really feel like it was, you know, it's pandemic time. I get it. You know, all that stuff. But um, I really enjoyed Black Widow. And I can't even say it's a good movie. It just it, it hit me. It, it just, I liked it from beginning to end. So... Yeah, I could see a Suicide Squad movie, another one, interesting me. Uh, I don't care about the director in that sense. If you keep the trend going, I could see it just being a good way to pull obscure characters out and throw them into weird situations and have it work. Yes, uh, I could see this being something, you know, what, every, well, who knows, DC, but every three years a Suicide Squad movie comes out. Yeah, I think I'd be okay with it. You might even um, add the characters in to pre-existing stuff. I don't know. I think DC is probably satisfied with this movie. And I'll give it that. That it's not um, at least the perceived shitstorm that the first Suicide Squad movie was. When you watch that movie, like, haircuts, different, um, it's just... Dialogue feels a little clunky. This is a better made movie. And I'm not going to blame it on the studio or director in the first one. And again, like I said, I didn't do enough deep dive. Uh, I don't remember enough. I try to avoid that stuff. But here we are. DC's The Suicide Squad. Directed by, you know, James Gunn. And I wish I had a better understanding of what caused the um, problem with him. But I guess I could have done a little more uh, you know, research, I guess. Do my job better. 
in any case, I should be getting back to this with a little more vigor, uh, a little more uh, dedication, and we'll see. I think I might, I don't know if I'll do uh, Shang-Chi. Hmm. We'll see what's up next. Like I said, it's been a weird time. I'm just getting back to normal. Things are somewhat back in a, you know, a routine again. So hopefully I'll be doing more of these. I look forward to hearing from you. Subscribe, like, you know, all that bullshit I never talk about. And I hope you enjoy them. I'll uh, talk to everybody soon. Take care.